Hi, it's been a while since I've actually sat down to film a video, um, but I'm really excited. <laughs> Hi, welcome back to my channel. I'm Jazz. This is Travels in Fiction, and today we are talking about books with autism representation. <laughs> I'm trying to film my video. She has literally been nowhere to be seen all day. And as soon as I sit down, like I'm gonna film a video, she's like, no, you're not. So firstly, I have to shout out Lily from Literary Lily. Lily made a post on Twitter that was basically like, hi everyone, free booktube slash content ideas, make a TBR focusing on autistic books um, as part of Autism Acceptance Month. And I was like, that's a really good idea to like show my support and to also talk about some of the like really good autistic books that are on my radar that I haven't like got to yet. So here we are. Thank you so much, Lily. Um, and I'm really excited to get to some of these books. Um, I've only actually physically got one of them, but as libraries and bookshops and stuff start opening again, <laughs> exciting. So these are all ones that have really piqued my interest over just like, I don't know, over the last few months and the last few days. Some of these I have only just discovered and some have been on my radar for a while. So yeah, this month is Autism Acceptance Month. It has been known in the past as Autism Awareness Month. There is very much a kind of movement towards making it Autism Acceptance Month to foster like a change and inclusion for those that have autism because acceptance being like a very big barrier um for those who have autism i will link below a few articles i read about this like name change um and i would highly recommend giving them a read as well um as well as that before we start i wanted to shout out um a blog post slash resource from molly from moles by moonlight um they compiled a huge 101 books with disability and illness representation and it is an amazing amazing resource with such a wide variety of books so if you are looking especially as disability readathon is happening at the moment as well if you are looking for um books with disability rep i would highly recommend checking out that blog post it's an amazing resource and uh, thank you so much to molly for taking the time to put it together Okay, so the first books I want to talk about are both by Elle McNichol and one of them is A Kind of Spark and then the other one I actually have a copy of and that is Show Us Who You Are. Both of these are middle grades and they are both own voices for autistic representation. So A Kind of Spark I believe was Elle McNichol's first like debut novel uh, and we follow an 11 year old girl who is campaigning for a memorial um, in her hometown in memory of the witch trials. Um, I've got part of the synopsis here. It says, Addie knows there's more to the story of these witches, just like there is more to hers. Can Addie challenge how the people in her town see her and her autism and make her voice heard? I have heard only amazing things about this book. I genuinely haven't heard ba anything bad. And so I'm really excited to read that middle grade. And then following on, I saw Lily, thank you, Lily, <laughs> um, made a rave review of Show Us Who You Are by Elle McNichol and I had to pick it up because it sounds really really excellent. Um, I actually picked this up yesterday um, because bookshops just opened in the UK so I was like yes please. Uh, this is actually signed by the author which is really cool right there, a little book plate. So this one is more of a contemporary with like dystopian sci-fi elements and in this book we follow Cora and Adrian Throughout the book, we find out that there's a company called Pomegranate, and this company is using AI, I believe, to recreate real people in a hologram form. And so far, they're like mapping brains, and so far they've only mapped neurotypical brains. And then I believe Cora, our main character, volunteers for her brain to be looked at. That's kind of the extent to what I know, apart from also the bits that Lily mentioned in her rave review. But it sounds really excellent. It sounds like a really fun, but gripping and wholesome read that kind of allows neurodivergent and autistic main characters to really shine and be their true self. And the way that Lily described it just completely sold it to me, to be honest. So I would really recommend going and watching Lily's review. So those are the two books by Elwick Nicholl. I'm really excited to read both of them. Obviously I'm gonna read this one first because I own it. Um, but yeah, those are the first two. So from here, all of them are gonna be on the screen because I do not own copies of these books yet. The next book I'm going to talk about is At Your Age, Eve Brown by Talia Hibbert. I am so excited to read this book. 
I absolutely loved Get Alive Chloe Brown, five stars. I absolutely loved Take a Hint Danny Brown, five stars. Do we see a trajectory? I see a trajectory. Um, and I'm really excited um, to kind of go back into the world with the Brown sisters uh, and have a kind of like conclusion to this series, I guess. Um, and I'm really excited about it. And I've also heard that this one, they just get better and better. So I'm just so excited to um, meet Eve and to meet Jacob. From some of the reviews, I can see that both the main characters in this book are autistic. Um, and that's just really lovely to see, to have like a romance book featuring two autistic protagonists and honestly I am just so so excited to go back into this world I just can't wait I loved both of the previous books so yeah that's the third one okay and so the next book I have on my list that I am really excited to get a copy of and read is Always Only You by Chloe Lees this one I believe I found on Molly's disability list um, of books that I mentioned earlier I think yeah I'm pretty sure that's true this one sounds just really, really fun. Um, it's own voices too. Um, Chloe Lee is autistic and it's an opposites attract. Yes, please. Sports romance. <laughs> yes, please. I literally love sports romance so much. Yes. And the main character has autism and I also believe rheumatoid arthritis, which is really interesting. So I'm really intrigued to see how that representation is done. Once again, kind of like following on from at your age Eve Brown it's really lovely to see autistic main characters in romance leads so yeah I'm really excited for this one it looks really fun honestly just sports romance that did it for me <laughs> um and I believe correct me if I'm wrong um if anyone's watching and knows it's not YA it's more like adult because in the blurb it was talking about like work and things like that and like co-worker so I believe it is like adult or new adult but I'm so sorry if I'm wrong but I believe that's true Okay, and then the final two books I have on this TBR, I saw on Jen Campbell's YouTube channel, um, specifically in her April TBR, where she was going through um, her TBR, 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 her TBR for the Disability Readathon. I added a lot of books from that list to my TBR, but specifically these two um, both have autistic representation in. So the first one is A Room Called Earth by Madeline Ryan. This one is own voices I believe all of these are own voices actually I could have just said that at the start but oh well and this one sounds so interesting it's one of those books that has it's like a snippet of a day and this book is set over a party and so we follow this woman who goes to a party and that is the book and so it's like literally like I guess like a few hours in this woman's life and the concepts like that I always find really really interesting um and from the synopsis it definitely seems to be more like character driven than like plot driven which makes sense in one of those types of books where it's like two hours and you're like in the mind of the main character kind of like following her around i will read out this little section here because i was finding it hard to summarize what this book seems to be about even though I know that I want to read it. Does that make sense? I don't know. A Room Called Earth is a humorous and heartwarming adventure inside the mind of a bright and dynamic woman. This hypersaturated celebration of love and acceptance from a neurodiverse writer is a testament to moving through life without fear and to opening ourselves up to a new way of relating to one another. <sighs> that sounds amazing. I'm really excited to read it because it sounds just like a really interesting concept and I don't know, do you just get the vibe sometimes when you know something will be beautifully written? This book sounds like it will be beautifully written. Okay, the last book I have on this TBR for you, I also found through Jen, and that is Stim, an autistic anthology. Um, this is edited by Lizzie Huxley-Jones, and it's like a collection of essays and prose uh, and fiction and also like art from lots of different prominent artists and writers in the UK. Um, who also happen to be autistic. Um, I wanted to just bring the laptop back up again so I could read this quote because it's gonna do it justice in a way that I absolutely can't, especially having not read the book. Around one in 100 people in the UK are autistic, yet there remains a fundamental misunderstanding of what autism is. It is rare that autistic people get to share their own experiences, show how creative and talented and passionate they are, how different they are from media stereotypes. That sounds absolutely amazing. I'm really enjoying reading anthologies and things like that. I'm really enjoying reading anthologies at the moment. I recently read The Other F Word and I really enjoyed that. That was a collection from loads of different writers all about being fat. 
And so I'm really, really interested. Um, I think especially with anthologies, it gives you a really wide range of perspectives um, because obviously, as with everything, autistic people are not a monolith. And so it's really interesting to hear from different perspectives. And then also with anthologies, you might really, really gel with one of the people's writings or art or stories. And then you can obviously go away and read more of their work, which I love. I, I love to discover new things. <laughs> so yeah, that's it. That's my TBR of books with autistic representation by autistic authors. I'm really, really excited to get to all of these, to be honest. If you've read any of them, please let me know in the comments what you thought. If you have any recommendations for books with autistic representation or by autistic authors, I would love to hear ofs. So please leave them below in a comment. Thank you once again to Lily for this video idea. We all know this, but it's worth remembering sometimes and voicing aloud. It is really important to support everyone in this community and obviously in the world. Um, but especially not just people that look like you and are like you. Yeah, thank you so much for watching anyway. <laughs> um, if you watch the end but you don't have anything to comment or you're not in a commenty space at the moment, that's okay. Just leave me a little yellow heart classic me so that I know that you are here and I will see you in a new video. Bye!